Hello YouTube and welcome back. This is Nico and you're watching Determinator Gaming. Today we're playing Kingdom Come Deliverance and we're doing a From the Ashes analysis video here. Now, when you're building in the settlement, there are three sets of options where you have two choices between what building you want to make. And this is the first of three videos I'm going to be making, each one a guide to help you or try to help you decide between the two. This one will be deciding between the Armorsmith and Swordsmith upgrade for the Forge. I'll show you the basics of each, the revenue revenue they make, and any unique new items that are added with them. Hopefully this will help you decide which one you want to build. Okay, so here on the Forge page in the book, you'll find all the basic information here for, you know, what we're looking at. Uh, I'll just quick read it. It says, A decent settlement must have a blacksmith who will fashion tools, nails, horseshoes, and in times of need, requisites for men-at-arms which, with the necessary equipment, he can double either as a swordsmith or an armorsmith. And as you can see here, I chose the armorsmith in this playthrough, uh, which was just an upgrade afterwards. So after you build the forge, you can choose to either build the swordsmith or the armorsmith, and in this one I chose the armorsmith. Uh, if you look over where it generates, up in the upper right-hand corner, uh, with the upgrade, it gives me 755 uh, Groshen. That's what it generates, that's what it adds, uh, along with five population. And it provides horseshoes for a stable or weapons for a garrison. Obviously here it's a stable, uh, which provides another 35 groschen. So it connects to the village and that's what you get for choosing the armorsmith. Alright, so the forge, in this case an armorsmith, can be found uh, right here. It's There's the tavern, up top is the church, so we're right down below the tree there. Uh, and you'll be able to tell what's the difference by the insignia there on the sign. This one obviously is for an armorsmith. It's a helmet there. Uh, if we walk inside, it looks pretty standard. I mean, uh, this end is more open. You see a lot of tools, but there's no open forge here. Uh, you see armor parts laying around. Uh, some shields up on all the walls. You enter inside and you can see that there's obviously a lot of armor sitting around. Because again, it's an armorsmith. And if you talk to your blacksmith... My respects to you. Yes, yes, mine as well. Uh, and you go into trade. You can find the unique item. I mean, obviously, it's not a bad selection of stuff one way or the other. It's a pretty decent armor shop, along with all of your horse armor added with the DLC, or almost all of it. Uh, a decent selection of stuff to get, but what's really interesting is the Boreback Shield, which is a unique item. I actually already have it. Uh... But uh, if you go into it, it says a shield made by the Privy Slavitz Armorsmith. Despite being lighter than similar shields, it offers quite good protection and will stand up to even a chain of several strikes. Uh, it's got a minimum strength level of 8 to use effectively with 168 defense, 20 charisma, and 105 durability. This is one of the best, if not the best, shield in the game now. So you only get that through building the Armorsmith here. If you choose the Swordsmith, that shield will not be available to you as far as I can tell, unless it's hidden in a chest somewhere else in the uh, area. So, you know, that's that's your armorsmith right there. Here in the book, you can see we're on the forge page again. The description's the same, so I won't read it again this time. But in this one, we built the swordsmith instead of the armorsmith. So if we go over to the revenue over there, it generates for the basic structure. It's again 500. Uh, I went and recruited swordsmith Fink from Sassaw, which is another 60 groschen. Uh, we have Swordsmith's Equipment, which adds 250. That's the upgrade, obviously. And again, we have Malice Must Be Sober, another 5 Groshen, giving us a total of 815 Groshen and 5 Population. And as an extra perk, this one provides weapons for the Garrison, which is 35 Groshen. Down at the site, it's obviously the same place as the Forge if you choose the Armorsmith. It doesn't change the place. But down here, you can tell, again... By the sign, this is obviously a sword shop, two swords crossed there, and when you walk inside, it's the first noticeable difference. Instead of the artisan station with all the armor, we have an open forge with a bunch of weapons sitting around with two swords crossed up there, which I actually think you can take. I'm pretty sure you can take those, because one of those looks like, they both look like swords from the game. But anyway, uh, in fact, that one does too, but maybe you can't. But anyway, so you walk inside, and you look in around here. Now, obviously, I have Swordsmith Fink here, so... You know, you'll only see that if you have him as well. But there's a large selection of swords here. In my opinion, probably one of the best, you know, for the game out of all the swordsmith. And right here, you're looking at 
your new unique weapon. So just like the armor shop had the shield, this has the tusk, which it describes. I'll just go into the shop and I'll read the description from there. I'm at your service. May the Lord watch over you. All right, so we pop over to uh, uh, weapons and we go down. Here's the tusk. It's got a nice aesthetic to it, you know, a differently colored handle. And we'll go into item info. It says, it's a type is longsword, and the description says, a bastard sword forged to be light and yet endure many blows without getting blunt. And I'm assuming there we're talking about 100 durability, which for a sword is pretty good. Uh, it only weighs 3.5 pounds. The price is pretty steep at almost 3,500. But it has a decent stab and slash damage of 58. It only takes one agility to use, which is great. And even has a blunt damage of 3 with a high uh, high defense of 104 and a charisma of 20. So overall, this is a fantastic sword. Uh, it should seriously go into consideration, you know, uh, for when you're deciding whether whether you want to do armor smith or swordsmith, you know, a shield or a sword, which one do you like more? But for this one, that's that's the major perk that you get for choosing the swordsmith. Well, that just about does it for this video. I hope you found it informative, entertaining, or at the very least, a good way to pass your time. Uh, hopefully you were able to decide, or this will help you decide, if you want to do the swordsmith or the armorsmith. As I pointed out, both are very similar and produce a similar amount of groschen. Because I was able to recruit swordsmith Fink, I make 60 extra groschen on top of it if I choose the swordsmith over the armorsmith. So therefore, you know, that's obviously a perk of choosing it. And really, it'll come down to which unique item do you want access to more, the sword or the shield. Um, but with that, you know, hopefully this guide was useful. If you liked it, drop a like, uh, maybe consider commenting down below. And if you haven't already, I strongly suggest subscribing and turning on notifications so you can stay up to date on everything I release for this game. But in any case, thanks for watching, and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.